Hey everybody at Light City Church, it's an honor to join in with you and although I would love to be there with you in person, this is better than nothing and I just have such a love for your church, such a love for your leadership over there and an excitement about what God is doing and that he has raised up Light City Church to really be a light, to really shine the goodness of the love of God in such a powerful way. I know my life has been impacted by you guys. Even as I came over to minister in your church several years ago, I was ministered to as well. And you guys are just an exceptional, exceptional group of people. And I'm excited to, to come and bring a little peace to hopefully encourage your day. Hopefully by the end of this that you'll be closer to Jesus than you were when we first got started. Hopefully you'll, you'll be stirred in your heart. Hopefully you will be just spurred on in the things of God and going farther in his, in his love for you and his plan for your life. And, you know, it's, it's been a little bit of time since I've been over with you guys. And, and, you know, when I was over there, I was thinking about this. Uh, uh, the, when I was over with you guys in person several years ago, I had an incredible uh, personal assistant, this guy named uh, Joseph Tucker. And, uh, you know, Joseph Tucker, man, he was on the ball. He just was helping me out. As a matter of fact, uh, I couldn't even go to the bathroom without this guy, like, just right next to me. He was, like, on this thing and, uh, you know, just did an incredible job helping me out. And, uh, you know, I think he's, he's gotten married now. He went and grew up on me and got married and, and is an adult now. And, you know, I, I'm just kidding. He was an adult, I think, when I met him anyway. And uh, so, and then back in that time, uh, Pastor Ian and Tina, they were the senior leaders there. I, I think that uh, now Alex and Danielle, you guys are heading, heading the charge over there, uh, even though I'm sure that Pastor Ian and Pastor Tina are, are deeply involved, and you know, I, I don't know how all that has, has, it looks like right now, but I think there's a transition that's taking place, and I, I celebrate that in your guys' life. I celebrate the season that the McDonald's are in. Aren't they amazing people? Aren't the McDonald's incredible leaders? Ian, Tina, and Alex, and Danielle, and Michael, and Jessica, aren't these like, they're just, they're top shelf five-star, incredible men and women of God, and they deserve to be celebrated. They deserve to be, uh, they deserve to be applauded. They deserve to be prayed for. They deserve, man, just you guys are, I want you to know that you are in a safe place, that you're a part of an incredible church with amazing leaders that I have such high respect and value of, and it's just an honor to have gone there in person and, and to be invited. I know it's kind of over this way here online, but, you know, that's, uh, as I said when I first started, that's better than nothing. And so uh, I celebrate you guys over there. I celebrate what God is doing, and, and Lord willing, it would be great to see you in person again sometime, but in any case, know that you are a part of a significant ministry. You're a part, I, I, you know, I've I've been able to travel all over the world, and I've been in all kind of different churches, and I don't say this lightly. You guys are a part of a very special ministry, a very special church, and uh, I, I, I just want to encourage you in that. Pray for your leaders, uh, because there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the world, and, and they need you to pray for them, even as they're praying for you. Pray for them as well, and so I I'm excited to bring a little peace into this day for you and hope that it's encouraging in your life. And just give you a little bit of an update about life with me and my family. Uh, there's some things that have changed since I've been over with you guys before. Pastor Tina came to uh, the three-week ministry school of Global Awakening, uh, and I was the administrator. I ran that three-week school, the Global Summer Intensive, and uh, and it was kind of after that that the invitation that came to come out over to you guys uh, uh, was given to me. And, you know, since that time, I've resigned from over there, and I'm coming to you from New Bern, North Carolina now. And uh, I know there's introduction and things that have gone on here, but uh, I'm over in New Bern. My wife and I are pastoring an amazing church called the Church at New Bern. And uh, you can find us online at newburnchurch.com. And by the way, Bern is B E. RN, newburnchurch.com. If you have ever tasted a Pepsi before, then you have had a taste of New Bern, North Carolina, because that's where it came out of. And there's 
some other landmark kind of area things and in history here. Uh, but it's a beautiful area and great. If you ever go on a vacation traveling through, send us a message. And I'd love to meet some of you guys that are part of that church if you're ever passing through North Carolina, about 45 minutes from the beach. And uh, so anyway, great place to come and visit with you guys if you're out traveling anywhere. So we moved out here. We're pastoring this church. Uh, we also have some more kids since the last time that uh, we were with you guys. And so now I've got a 12-year-old girl and a 7-year-old girl and a 19-month-old boy. And, uh, you know, so you can take a moment and just pray for us right now. Just pray. Uh, you know, we have a pretty widespread group of ages, and they're going through all kind of different stuff in their lives right now, and bless our hearts. It's just really fun. I love my kids, uh, and I love what God is doing in their lives and, the, and the, their personalities and their interests and things. And, and, you know, it's a wild adventure being a parent. Love my wife. She's amazing. She's just finishing up a Master of Divinity, Micah. Uh, she's finishing that up with Global Awakenings Theological Seminary. And once she's done with that, pretty much the next day, she is starting a doctorate program. And so she is hard at work uh, finishing up one program and, and is about to begin another one. Uh, there's a real call on her life in the area of education and spirit-filled education. It's really powerful seeing that happen in her life. As a matter of fact, uh, there are people that are... Uh, uh, mentors in her life uh, that are significant scholars in her day. One of them is a translator for the New International Version of the Bible. And more than one person, this person and, and others, have said to her that she has the makings of a scholar and if she wants to go that route. So there's, she just has a real high intelligence and she hears from the Lord uh, and, and just, just incredible woman of God. And so uh, celebrate what God is doing uh, in her life, we're about to celebrate 19 years of marriage on September 7th. That's coming up as well. So those are some snapshots of personal stuff that's going on. Uh, also have some books that I've written since I was with you guys as well. So I'll give you a little bit of highlight on that. And uh, so I was with you. I had the basics in 21 days. I did have this back in the day when I was with you guys several years ago. And uh, basics in 21 days, this is a book for uh, new believers and, I, you know, I have people that have been walking with the Lord for a number of years that have been encouraged with this book, but it's basically like a 21-day devotional, and uh, has, it's written very simply on purpose, and it has helps in it for people that uh, are new to Christianity, and in fact, the back of it here, there's a section called Christian Lingo, uh, and that's for people who, you know, don't know what we're saying. You know, we have our own little subculture, right, that uh, you know, we have our own little Christianese, and, uh, you know, so this, this area here, Christian Lingo, will help people survive their first church service, so they can hear, hear some of us say something and go, oh, 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 that's what you mean by a, a, a gap, a gappy, agape, what, what, a, okay, that's what you mean, so they, they have a little resource there to help them out, but this, uh, this book here is a great starter for someone they just given their life to Jesus, it, it starts with how to hear the voice of God and, uh, and has that all the way through the book so that you know Christianity is really about a relationship. And so that's getting established right there on day number one. A book that I, I wrote uh, since I've been with you guys, this book here called Robbing Hell. And this book is a book that is 245 pages long and has 256 footnotes in it. And so it's not a tiny book. It's a pretty good-sized book, uh, and it's on evangelism. This particular book comes out of a, a, a lot of experience in all kind of different venues. By the mercy and grace of God, I've led about 50,000 people to the Lord. And um, I take some of that and put it right in this book for you. And so this book has all kind of different approaches and different ideas. Uh, anybody can pick up this book, and you can be... You can find something that will help you get started in reaching people, sharing the love of Jesus. And so uh, that's what this book here is, Robbing Hell. Uh, just finished another book. It's actually with uh, endorsers right now. In fact, one of the endorsers came over to Light City Church. You met Katie Luce came out that way. She's one of the endorsers. She just sent me an endorsement a few days ago. And uh, that book is a short book on evangelism. 
and it's called Activating Introverts in Evangelism. Activating Introverts in Evangelism, Hope, hopefully I'll have that out within the next month or two. And uh, so uh, that is a very specific book about uh, un unpacking what it looks like to reach people as an introvert. I'm an introvert. I'm not an extrovert, and I feel like there's a lot of people who look at evangelism from an extrovert uh, personality and approach, and what I'm trying to do is help activate this whole other part of the body of Christ, because uh, there's all kind of misconceptions, like people think that being an introvert means that you're shy, and being a, or being an introvert means that you're shy, and being an introvert does not equal being shy. And I kind of unpacked that a little bit in Activating Introverts. has a lot of practical help. Uh, and like I said, it's written short on purpose. You read that, you get things to get started. You, as an introvert, could see people coming to Jesus not long after reading that book, if that uh, is a new idea for you. And so you can look at some of those things on our website. That is releasinglife.org, releasinglife.org. Uh, and on that website, we have a few other things that I'll, I should let you know about. We have some online courses, and these online courses uh, are recently felt the Lord uh, having me change the way that we did our online courses to being an optional donation. And so if you're watching this right now and you're like, man, I, I'm really interested in that kind of stuff, but you know, I don't know if I could, I could pull off paying for something, then take it anyway. You know, on this, we've, we've, we have no charge. You're, it's a donation if you want to do it. And so you're going to find a, a, an online course for my wife, and uh, that course is on inner healing, emotional healing, uh, and you're going to find a course on evangelism called uh, the Evangelism Intensive is what that is, and then also a course that my wife and I did together uh, on uh, really drawing close to God. And you're, you'll find all of these kind of courses. In the, in the one on drawing close to God, uh, you're going to find interviews on there. I have over a dozen interviews from people all over the world uh, that are, are people who are walking with God and their life story and, and you know, how they pursue God will help you as you want to draw close to God. And so you'll find all of those, uh, all three of those there on our website and uh, we're developing some more things as well. So again, you can go in there, sign up for our newsletter. You can find us uh, on our Facebook page, Life Ministries International, and on Instagram at uh, Releasing Life. And you can actually look up Activating Introverts on Instagram. Just recently started an account there if you want to stay up to date on Activating Introverts. And so those are some of the things that have been going on uh, in our personal lives and also our itinerant ministry. also wanted to tell you about uh, our amazing church and some testimonies, some things that have been going on here as well uh, where I am filming and where I'm sending this, broadcasting it over to you guys uh, that are church to church at New Bern. Uh, you know, all the churches around the world, we've been going through quite a bit of stuff. You've been going through stuff. Uh, your, your, you know, Light City Church has been going through stuff. Our church has... Uh, and all the kind of dynamics going on in the world, uh, and just seeing God meet us in such a powerful way. Uh, we made the choice to, to gather, uh, and I don't know what exactly things are like where you guys are at and what, uh, you know, the different climates, what, what the atmosphere and things are like over with you, but, you know, we decided along the way prayerfully that uh, we would open our doors and we would start having services and, and we still live stream and we have some people that join us online, but we have quite a few of our church family that, uh, you know, we had a, a season where we just live streamed and did things online, but we had quite a few of our church family that gathered to, and are gathering right now. Uh, and I'm telling you that what God has been doing here is difficult to put into words. I'm, and let me tell you a couple of testimonies. One is uh, on uh, Mother's Day. And uh, pastors know that on there there's certain holidays that you don't extend a service. And, uh, you know, and these are one of those days. And so Mother's Day, people have plans or 
got reservations at restaurants, all kind of things that are set up. And so I'm closing out the service. And so everybody's standing, and, and I'm just closing in prayer. There wasn't anything particularly different about the service up until then. But as I'm closing in prayer, not an emotional thing going on, just closing in prayer. Uh, uh, and as I was closing in prayer, I started seeing people in the congregation have tears come down their eyes. And I said something about it. I remember uh, Dr. Randy Clark from Global Awakening, how he, I, I could hear his voice in my head talking about if you see God doing something, then you can honor it by saying something about it. And so I, said, I, you know, I see the Lord touching some people right now, and I see some tears coming down some cheeks. And when I said that, the presence of God fell in this room, uh, and, and it's difficult to express what happened. Now, a, a few things happened. Some people just started falling where they were at. People started weeping. Other people started laughing. Uh, and I'm closing in prayer. Like, this, this isn't, you know, an appeal to an altar call. This is, you know, come up for prayer. Or anything. I'm closing the day in prayer. This is Mother's Day. And uh, so this is going on, and I'm going, Holy Spirit, what do I do now? And uh, so ended up kind of opening it up just to see if the Lord was showing some people things, had room for prophetic words, and as people came up to share prophetic words, they were falling on the ground. Presence of God was so thick, some people weren't making it up to the front. Uh, we had one person that did share a prophetic word, and then she fell out in the front, and, and uh, then someone else came up a little bit later and shared that her hands were really hot, even driving into the church that day. And I knew that hands being hot can be a symbol of God touching someone for healing, that, that they're going to lay hands on people and see them healed. And so I said, if you have any sickness, any pain in your body, go to this lady here. She's going to pray for you. And uh, the person that had fell out a little bit earlier, just right over here, uh, she heard that, and she tried to sit up and tell her husband to get prayer. And when she sat up, she pointed at him and could only speak in tongues. And so she sat up, pointed at her husband, started speaking in tongues. And it was the funniest thing. Uh, I, did, I just laughed and laughed. All over the room, stuff like that was happening. People were on the ground crying out to the Lord, and, and people were getting healed all over. People were getting healed that were watching the service. And uh, so the, the lady that, I, that had set up later, she told me that she had never had anything like that happen to her before. And uh, my wife had ministered sometime back and had talked about getting wrecked by God. And, and she, had, she said, what is wrecked by God? So she was praying about that. I said, God, what is wrecked by you? I, if that's from you, then I want it. And she, she said, I know, what, I know what it is now. I experienced being wrecked by God. And, uh, you know, all of us can use some times of getting wrecked by God. Amen? It's really good. And, you know, that's just one thing. Another Sunday uh, where uh, we had a, a guest speaker and uh, during the worship my wife was over here at the keyboard, and she's just, you know, just worshiping and, and uh, leading from the keyboard. And the worship service, uh, you know, as we we're singing, just loving on Jesus, it wasn't something that was where uh, it, it was really a electric or really powerful presence or something like that. It was good, um, but it, it wasn't like really powerful. And, and she got where she started playing the first few notes of the last song that she had prepared. And when she started playing that song, I was standing over here in the front row, and I could feel the presence of God hit me in the back. And it went like from the back to the front. And I, and I thought, what is going on? Which is really different because many times you'll feel like the presence of the Lord come from the front to the back, right? Where you have any church experience and you know uh, about the presence of the Lord and, and God showing up in power. And, and so many times that happens kind of to the, from the front to the back. But this hit me from the back. And later somebody shared that they had a vision where they saw Jesus come into the back of the sanctuary like a lion and he roared. And I, I didn't see that happen. But when they said that, I said, oh, that makes sense now. Now I know why I felt like the presence hit me from the back. And so the presence of the Lord just filled the room. All of a sudden, people started crying out to God, and worship just went to a whole nother level. It wasn't because 
there was something from the platform. It wasn't because my wife was trying to get people hyped up or anything. It just, it was like God stepped into the room. And then as my wife was playing the keyboard, she started, the presence of the Lord came on her. The glory of God started touching her and, and she was having a hard time staying. She was bending over trying to lead worship and it was getting harder and harder. And then all of a sudden she realized she wasn't going to be able to stand anymore while she's playing. And so she tried to turn to the side and, and, and was going to try to gracefully kind of crumpled to the floor because the presence of the Lord was on her so strong, but somehow she just kind of touched the keyboard just a little bit. She thought it was really soft. Um, later, she saw a bruise. She got a big bruise on her arm. She thought at the moment it didn't, it didn't hurt, just felt like a little soft touch. But all of a sudden, when she tried to turn to the side and the, the presence of the Lord was on her so strong, she couldn't stand up. She hit that keyboard and went flying over. Now watch this. The keyboard went flying over into the front of the church, into the, into the front here, and everybody went nuts. Everybody just went nuts, and it was and nuts in a good way. We just went after God, and, and the Lord released prophetic words. There were gifts of the Spirit, His presence was electric. We just worshiped God, with, and the worship leader was down on the ground. The keyboard was on the front, laying right over here in the front of the church, and everybody was just, wow, it was, it was crazy. It was so good. And, uh, you know, that's just, that's two different services, two different times. And it's got where, where I don't know what's going to happen. There's a real fear of the Lord on this thing. And there's a beauty in, in getting together. You know, the Bible tells us that we should not forsake the assembling of the saints. And friends, let me tell you that in all the environments that are going on, when you can gather, I don't know what it looks like there right now, but when you can gather, please do. Because there are things that will only happen when we gather together, when we assemble together, when we come and we're coming in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, God is honoring that. God is showing up all over the planet with people that are gathering together. And so I, I think that you guys are recently starting to meet, if I understood that right. And I just, I, and I, if I'm misunderstanding it, please forgive me. But when you can gather, if you're not gathering already, when you can, please prayerfully do that because as we, there are things that happen in an environment when we're together that, uh, that are difficult uh, to explain with words and, and the presence of the Lord and the gifts of the Spirit and, and the power of God that comes as we get together. Uh, as, as we gather in the name of Jesus. I'm thankful for online. I'm joining you that way right now. I'm thankful for that capacity. Uh, it's better than nothing, okay? And so if you're in that place right now and, and you can't gather, there's some laws or, or whatever things are going on, uh, or in, in your own personal life, the Lord has said something to you, but, you know, uh, if, if you can, do and I, I think God wants to show up. In fact, I want to take a moment and pray for you right, right now. I want to pray for Light City Church. Heavenly Father, I thank you for that place. I thank you for Light City Church. I thank you for their love of your word. I thank you for their love of your spirit. I thank you for their love of Jesus Christ. And I bless them today. God, and I could, you know that I could give, you, give them more examples of things that you've been doing here at our church but I just highlight those two days, and I give all glory to you. It wasn't because I was a great preacher. It wasn't because my wife was doing something to get people on board. It wasn't because of a natural momentum that was built. It was because of you. All glory to you, God, and what you are doing here at the church at New Bern. And God, I ask, whatever you're doing here, I ask that you would do it there at Light City Church Holy Spirit, I ask you to come. We need you. We need you, Holy Spirit. Would you come? Would you release prophetic words? Would you re release your gifts, words of knowledge? Would you release gifts of faith? Would you release, God, healings and miracles and words of wisdom? Would you release your presence and power into that place, even as they gather together? Would you come to Light City Church? in a powerful way, not just today, but Lord, even in a new season, that that place would be saturated in your presence. Wow, more Holy Spirit. God, I agree with what you're doing. Just lean in right now to what God is doing. 
Raise your hands where you're at. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. I agree with what you're doing right now in Light City Church in Jesus' name. And I ask for an increase. I ask for an increase of your presence. I ask for an increase, God, of your presence in that place. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy are you. We worship you. We love you, God. Friends, just right where you're at, just worship him in your own words. Just worship him in your own words. Holy. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Friends, I had people that were watching us online that lived close enough to drive to the service. And they say, we're watching online, and we had to drive over, and God was touching them as they were driving over to the building. I pray and that it happens. If you're watching this, and you can get over to the building, if you're in that kind of season right now, then keep online, keep watching, and get over to the church. Let God touch you. Let God minister to you right now. Get over to the church if you can. Bless Bless the Lord. Bless his name. You are worthy, God. Take us deeper, Holy Spirit. Take us deeper, Holy Spirit. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. The Lord is breaking off some shackles, even some fear, some depression. The Lord is breaking off some depression that have been like chains, choking some people. Thank you, God. More of your presence. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. Holy Spirit, I ask you to help me to share what's on your heart. I need your help, Holy Spirit. I need your help, Holy Spirit. These people need to hear from you and not me. They need to encounter you and not just me. More Holy Spirit. You guys know that the world has been going through a lot of stuff and you guys haven't. During this time, More Holy Spirit. I don't know what's going on with you guys, but wow. More Holy Spirit. Just lean into him. Jesus, we worship you. Can you just worship Jesus? Can you just worship Jesus? Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy. Help me, Holy Spirit. Oh, God. You are worthy. We fix our heart and our eyes on you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. As the world has gone through lockdown on, on several different levels, and I'm sure you've experienced this as well, different lockdown and trying to look at how to do life. One of the things that started coming out of this environment is rethinking how we do things and, uh, you know, rethinking how businesses work. Maybe you own a business or maybe you work at one and a lot of, a lot of them are thinking about you know, how to do things remotely. And a lot of people are starting their own online courses and own their online businesses. And, uh, you know, everything is the five-day challenge to this thing. And, you know, come over here and 
and I, I have this video for you to watch, and I have this course for you to do, and uh, as all of those kind of things are going on, people have been looking at trying to utilize this time and to, to really, if I could use this word, be more strategic in how uh, they approach life, where things that were uh, easy to do and, and kind of happened organically and naturally uh, were not as easy to do anymore. So we had to be a little more strategic in how we went about doing things and our businesses and, and our home life and in schools, if you had to, you know, trying to do things with school and, and how to balance all of that out and in churches as well, looking at, you know, how, how can we be strategic? And I, and I just have a, a really simple thing I want to share with you for the next couple of minutes. Uh, and I'm going to share it to you from my perspective as a pastor, but I think you'll be able to look at how to apply it in your, in your own life. In Luke chapter 8, in verse 8, Jesus is sharing a parable, and we know it as the parable of the sower. In verse 8, at the end of this, he, he says, Other seed fell into the good soil and grew up and produced a crop a hundred times as great. And he said the, as he said these things, He would call out, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. That's Luke chapter 8 and verse 8. And the parable of sower is also recorded in Matthew 13 and also in uh, Mark chapter 4. Uh, And I'll come back in a minute to a little bit of the context of the whole parable. Uh, But this idea of wanting to be strategic, I was really drawn over to this verse and sharing a little bit of my heart with you for a minute and some of my own journey, even as pastoring, uh, wanting to be as strategic. I wanted to see that hundredfold. You want to see that hundredfold return in your life and the things that you put your hand to, whatever that looks like, to see that hundredfold return happen in your life. I really wanted to see that happen. And and as things were difficult and as there was a lot of stuff going on, what began to happen in my own heart as I began to feel kind of the the weight of responsibility of pastoring, the weight of of trying to carry the load of people going through all the stuff that they were going through and and trying to to have an environment where there's community happening, even though we weren't meeting, and trying to have a, a, a place where we're moving forward and saying, God, what are you telling us right now? And what are the most strategic things to do? How can we be the most strategic even as we get back together? And so I really felt that pressure and that responsibility that the next season of the church rested on my shoulders. And that it was almost as if I, I, I took the responsibility from God and took too much from God and said, that I, it's on me. I'm the one who's got to make it happen. And I would just see the holes in the church and see what we're not doing and what things aren't happening and who's not here and what's not taking place. And, and my mind was on those kind of things. And, and so what I started doing in response to that is I started studying. I went in, instead of going into prayer mode, I went into research mode. And I don't know if you're like that, but I, I went into reading and studying and watching this thing and listening to this person and, and getting these books and looking at how can I be the most strategic pastor and how can we have have all the systems in place and, and be the most strategic church and have all the different parts that are moving that are the most strategic so we have that hundredfold return that goes on. And uh, I found myself getting to the place where I only wanted to do something if it seemed strategic, if it seemed something that would grow our church, if it seemed something that would be a good investment for me, a good use of time for my family, a good sacrifice. I'll give you an example. We, I, I didn't want to spend time with people if they weren't wanting to invest in our church. In other words, be a part of our church. I, I, I didn't want, that was, a, that was a sacrifice of time away from my family to go spend time with people and do things. And I, I wanted to be strategic. If you were somebody that was serious about our church, by all means, let's get together and spend some time. But someone who, you know, just was new and they were trying to decide if they were going to be a part of our church, man, that's a, that's a sacrifice. I don't know 
you know, if I should take the time to do that and, you know, trying to look at what should we put our resources in, what can, should we be putting our time in uh, to, to have the, the greatest return and have that hundredfold return on that. And I started doing evangelism. You guys, if you remember and know me at all, I showed you robbing hell and I talked to you about activating introverts and evangelism. You know me at all. You know my heart burns for those that, that don't know Jesus. It's been something that's a part of my life. Since I was a child, the Lord spoke to me in an audible voice when I was five years old and called me to preach, and he broke my heart for the lost. Even at that young age, I began to, to weep for those that didn't know Jesus. And, and so I, I, to, to go from that to actually being in a place where I resented evangelism because what happened is I was reaching out to people, and then they wouldn't come to our church. They might go to somebody else's church. They might not go to church at all. You know, I don't, whatever their story was, many of them, they would go over to somewhere else and didn't come to our church. And so I was like, why do I want to do evangelism if they're not coming into our church? That, it's twisted thinking, even saying out loud, you can say, man, that's really twisted, and you're right. I let myself get really depressed. I let myself kind of close in. I stopped meeting with people. I stopped meeting with people if I felt like, uh, you know, they weren't celebrating what God was doing. If they weren't all in, then I didn't want to spend time with them. If I, didn't, if I wasn't really sure that somebody could come to our church, then I didn't want to spend time reaching out to them. And guys, that's wrong. But that's where I was at. I was so depressed. And then one day the Lord spoke to me, and this is really the, the simple message that I have for you here this morning. The, the, the title of this message is How to Be Strategic, but it's a little bit of kind of a tongue-in-cheek for you guys, uh, because the Lord corrected me one day, even as I was looking at some things that needed to be done. The Lord had a lot of mercy on me, and he said these words. He said, love will be accidentally strategic. Let me say that again. Love will be accidentally strategic. That challenged me at my core, and the Lord brought me over to this sower. We read the end of it about this harvest, but those familiar with Scripture, you know that there were four soils involved, and this guy, the, the sower, went and sowed seed, and there was one, 25%, one of the four that produced the, the, that harvest that came out. There were three other, 75%, that didn't, and the Lord showed me that in the life of Jesus, he did have people that produced a harvest for him. He did have people that did incredible things and genuinely followed him. But he had a lot of people that didn't. He healed a lot of people that never followed him. He taught a lot of people that never followed him. He didn't hold back his love just to those who could give something back. He shed his blood for the world not just for those that will get saved. You know the Bible, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus shed his blood for the whole world and not just those that are serving him or that will serve him. It's amazing to think about his lavish love that he freely gave out. And here's the thing. That in doing that love, and doing that lavish, excessive love, there will be overlap between what love does and what is strategic. Because you can do things that are strategic that are not from love. But here's what I want you to know. If you're following the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 1, it says, follow the way of love. Follow the way of love. It goes on to talk about earnestly desiring spiritual gifts. But listen, it says, they finish 1 Corinthians 13, and he starts out 1 Corinthians 14, and he says, follow the way of love. If you follow the way of love, it will overlap what is strategic. It will do a lot of things that are not strategic. You'll give to people who can't give back to you. 
You'll spend time with people who they won't invest back in your life. But that's what love does. That's what Jesus did. That's what he's done in our lives. And I found myself getting, getting free that I had the privilege of interacting with people that Jesus counted worth dying for. And when I begin to think this way, when I begin to think with this question, listen very carefully. What does it look like to love this person? When I begin to think that way, then there is overlap with what is strategic. For, so for example, uh, being strategic, and from, from my context of pastoring, okay, you can translate this to whatever, whatever environment you're in, but in my context, it, it raises the potential of someone returning to our church if I give them a call or I go and visit with them after they come in and have been a first-time guest, okay? And so a strategic thing, if you read things about strategy for churches, then it's to have a good assimilation program. And it's about how, you know, part of that program, part of that idea is how to best connect with people that are first coming over to your church. And one of those areas highly recommended is giving that personal call or going to visit someone if you can. It does raise up the possibility of doing it. But I could go visit somebody without love. I could try to be strategic, and it's about growing my church. And all I hear kind of in the echo of my mind is Jesus saying things to people like, you have received your reward here. You know, I would have been missing the point when we do things that are not following the way of love, when we do something not from love, then it might be strategic in a natural place, but we've blown it. We missed the point. Now, what I found is that love might do the same thing but it has a different motive in doing it. So now I do contact the people that are new to here. I do want to see them. I do have coffee with them if I can. I do give them a call. I do have, you know, new, new to us get togethers and membership stuff, you know, all the kind of classes. But, but my mind, my heart is in a different place. I've met with people and I've told them that I'm not meeting with you just so you come back to our church. I'm meeting with you because I wanted to meet you. I want to know your story. I wanted to get to know you a little bit. And if I never see you again, I don't count this as a waste of time. I've had the privilege of loving somebody Jesus counted worth dying for. So that's what I mean is what sometimes what love would look like is what strategy would recommend. And there's crossover. It's kind of like where Jesus said, uh, we must surpass the righteousness of the Pharisees. You know, and, and Jesus said to the Pharisees, on the outside, you, know, you guys got all these things going on. You're, you're doing this thing and doing that thing and doing this thing. But on the inside, it's, it's like dead men's bones, right? That it, it's, it, it's dead inside. You're having the wrong heart. You've forgotten things that really matter in the kingdom. He's and so he's talking to them about that. But the outside looks the same. Somebody who's following the way of love will do some similar things that they were doing. People that are walking in righteousness just from the outside will do things uh, that look righteous, but their heart will be in the wrong place. Somebody doing righteousness from the wrong heart, they will do things that look the same as those who are doing it from the wrong heart. But the one doing it from the way of love, from the right heart, when they do those same things, it, that's what matters to God. He sees the heart. You guys that know the Bible know the story where Samuel, the Lord told him when he was looking for who is going to be a king, and we know the story that he ended up anointing this guy named David, right? And God said that man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. And this is what challenged me. This is what, in the mix of of All the dynamics that are going on and trying to even adjust life. What does it look like to be strategic in our lives? What does it look like when we're starting that business? What does it look like we're doing that online stuff? What does it look like when we're doing stuff in our church environment? What does it look like in our family? You know, 
It has to be from this place of love. It has to be following the way of love. When you follow the way of love, don't expect everything to be strategic. You're going to do things that aren't strategic. But it will be something that matters to God. When you give to someone who can't give back to you, when you spend time with people and you genuinely care about them, when you're doing that online business and you genuinely have the customer in mind where you're praying for them, where you are involved in things in the church and serving other people, not just to have something to do and not just because your, your calling is that, but in order to glorify Jesus, in order to love the people that are in front of you. When you have that heart, even if it doesn't seem spectacular, even whatever that looks like, it matters to God. And I believe that even as you do that, you will have a harvest. You will have that time where you're pouring into someone and you see the lasting fruit that comes out of that. You will see that God freely gives those ideas to those who want to walk in the way of love those that are starting businesses, those that are trying to serve in the, the business or the capacity, those that want to see their family thrive. You know, what does it look like to love my wife? What does it look like to love my husband? What does it look like to love my children right now? What does that mean? What, how can I follow the way of love? That's, that's being strategic from God's perspective. And I believe that in those things, he will cause fruit to happen. Not because you're trying to be strategic, but because you're following the way of love. And as you do that, I believe that those in this parable, that 30, 60, 100 fold uh, return that you see in Matthew 13 and in Mark 8, where Luke 8 just highlights 100 fold. But you see these different levels of return that I believe that those, there are people that produced incredible amount of fruit for the kingdom of God, maybe more than if everybody produced a little bit of fruit. I don't know. That's just speculation. But my point is that it's never a waste to love someone. It's never a waste from God's perspective to follow the way of love. It's never a waste to come at your life, the, the needs of your family, the needs of your business, the, the needs of the company you're a part of, the needs of the employees that work for you, the needs of your church, the, the needs of all these things with this question. What does it look like to love this person? Holy Spirit, help us to follow the way of love. As I end this message today, I'm not telling you to not be strategic or to study how to do things well. I'm wanting to encourage you to follow the way of love. And that whatever you study, whatever areas of strategy and understanding of things, of learning how to do things better, whatever that is, that it comes from the place of the way of love, following love in your life, following the Holy Spirit. I want to pray for a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit in your life. Would you just, would you stand to your feet as we close? Put your hands out in front of you. You're going to receive a, a gift from the Lord. I want to pray for a fresh baptism of love in your life. Yeah. Just stand there just for a moment. Even as you're standing there, there may be some people here that you need to get things right with God. As I pray into this, I want you to Give Jesus your life. Just say it in your own words where you're at. Jesus, I give you my life. And I want you to tell some of the leadership there. I want you to tell somebody that's in, in leadership. 
I got right with God. If you're, if you, if you need to get things right with God, you've never given your life to Jesus, or you've followed Him for some time, but you know you're not, and you you want to get things right with Him, just talk to Him right now while we're all standing. Just just talk to Him for a moment. Give Him your life. Ask Him to forgive you for everything you've done wrong, and and. Let the leadership know that you're doing that. Let's receive from the Lord right now. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for the way of love. I thank you that according to Romans chapter 5, that you pour love within our heart. That hope does not disappoint as you for love and us. I ask in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, would you please baptize these precious people, fresh and anew, in your love. Anyone who has wondered if they're lovable, anyone who's been dry, I ask God that you would fill them right now in Jesus' name. Fill them fresh. Fill them fresh right now. Help us love the Father more. Help us to love the Son more. Holy Spirit, help us to love you more. I ask for a fresh baptism of love. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Lord, I agree with whatever you're doing. And I ask for more. Thank you. Thank you, God. Fresh, fresh touch from heaven. We love you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name. Now, friends, I don't know if, as you're wrapping up your service, if there are some announcements to do or other things that are going on, but I want to encourage you to not run out of the service if you're, if you're gathering right now. Don't run out of the service right away and, until you feel released to do that. Just spend some time with the Lord. And if you need to ask forgiveness for anything, do that. If you need to just worship Him, just be with Him, receive His love, do that. If you're just in His presence in some way, just receive. Just don't rush. So I bless you, and I'm thank, I thank God for you. It's been an honor to spend this time with you. And I pray for an increase of all God's best for you, that you would not miss one single thing on God's heart for you. Blessings to you guys. Please stay in touch. I hope to hear from you and hear what God's doing in your life. Until next time, God bless.